for the next video will be download the sources of JWebSocket, compile these sources using NetBeans ID, and export JWebSocket home pointing to the new downloaded JWebSocket home in the sources folder. So this is the last video from this installation and configuration section. Let's see. Let's get started with this. We go to our jwebsocket.org website with the download section and from there we will choose the sources. It's a zip file, it has 71.5 megabytes. Once the download is complete we go to the downloads folder and there we will have the downloaded jwebsocket full sources. And we copy this file, we will copy this file into the documents, into the folder that we created for JWebSocket. But we will not use anymore the standalone server. We will create a new folder which will be called Sources. And inside there we will put the latest sources of JWebSocket, the full source. So yes, we just extract it here. And remove this file anyway, we have it in the downloads folder. So this is the JWebSocket development sources. So in the case that you are a developer and you want to get started with making your own application in JWebSocket, so this is what you will need. In this case, we have a new JWebSocket home, which is located in the folder RTE and JWebSocket 1.0. So here is a bit bigger, but here we have a, a configuration folder which includes, as, as in the JWebSocket home shown before, this includes a new, uh, a new configuration, the most, the latest update with all the complete plugins and the demos and everything is configured inside here. The JWebSocket brings, JWebSocket XML brings the configuration for all the engines, all the writes, and the the plugins that are loading, the filters and not everything which is loaded when the server starts will be in that folder. So here we will copy now this fast JWebSocket home environment. So we have to update the environment by the way. So we go to the properties of the computer, run to settings, environment variables. Now we will update JWebSocket home. As you remember, we created a standalone server before and we exported that variable. But now this will change and we will copy, copy here the latest folder. So now it will be pointing to JWebSocket devel development and to the JWebSocket home, as I mentioned before. That is all. This that should work. So now this is the important thing. Here in the folder branches is included all the sources, the sources of JWebSocket. So all of these projects are loaded as a sub-project of the JWebSocket POM. So this is a Maven project complete. Let's just open this with NetBeam. So let's just open the project. So as I mentioned before, we have a sources folder with the JWebSocket development and we have the branches. So inside these branches we have the POM project which is a Maven project. We will open and this is our JWebSocket parent project. The next step will be this project needs to be compiled. We just build it and we will have to wait for a long time because it's a lot of modules inside here. We have JWebSocket Common, which is the base of JWebSocket. Here is implemented all the basic libraries which make work all the other parts of JWebSocket. So this will be the first project to be compiled, then our server API, and then a client API, and then all the other stuff.
Yep. So the build process is complete. So it reported a failure at the end because one of the plugins is not very well very well configured. So sometimes it is, it is missing some dependencies and some things. So in this case, we, we can go directly and comment it in the phone project. We can use it, but the next version, we are planning to, to fix this little detail. So right now, if you don't, just don't want it, you can go there and comment it. And leave it commented. So it, and the next build, it will be definitely success. So this, the result was failure be, because one of the project elements failed, but all the others are success. So this means that we are able to run the server. So we will go to the modules. We will open the JWet socket server project. And the next step will be running this project. Our JWeb socket home is correctly set, so it will start with the configuration we find in the JWeb socket home folder. We see here the JWeb socket home with our location. So at the beginning it loads some libraries that it needs to run and then the, it starts including the plugins of JWet socket. It starts the flash bridge in the port 843 to give a flash fallback for the browsers that don't support WebSocket still. So the all of the plugins are already loaded, there is no error in the in the startup. And the server is listening in the port 8787 or 9787. In case that we want to establish a web socket secure, you can use the 9797. So how we are totally sure that the server is running, we will open a local host. We receive all the tokens and it made all the connection process. Yep, it is one. So this is all what we needed to know. All the other demos will also authenticate and work. This is what we were looking for. We already run our first JWet socket sources after being compiled we could run our JWet socket server from the sources. So the next ta the next task will be creating our own JWet socket plugin plugin so that we can create our own application and, and run it using the server and export it in the configuration of JWet socket. Thank you for watching.